Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilith Huting, and I'm here with the Augen uh, Gen Touch 78 7-inch Android tablet again. Uh, I had an unboxing video a little bit earlier today. Just wanted to give you a slightly closer look at it and some of what it can and cannot easily do. Uh, again, I'm still using my Google Nexus 1 camera here, so the video quality might not be stellar, but it should give you a basic idea of what's going on. So first thing I wanted to show you is that it does actually have four buttons on the back for home, search, uh, uh, menu, and back. It's also got a fairly nice large speaker there. Uh, over here in another corner, we've got the uh, stylus, which is removable. And we've got a couple of different ports here, uh, including a USB port, power cable, a 2.5 millimeter headphone jack, the uh, power button. And this last one here is a little bit tricky. I immediately thought that it was a micro SD card slot, but uh, when I put in a micro SD card, it sort of fell in, and I had to find some tweezers to get it out. It wasn't easy. Uh, I'll probably give it another try later, but um, not right away since I don't really want to lose that micro SD card. Um, if you look at the top, and I'm not sure how well this is going to come across in the video, you can see that there's also a label that says HDMI, but that HDMI label is right here where there's just a solid piece of plastic. So it looks like uh, maybe they were thinking about putting an HDMI port in there and didn't, or something else. Um, I'll see if I can maybe take the back cover off here, remove the screws, and see if there's something hidden under there. I'm um, also going to try and figure out how to get that SD card in there. Um, in the manual, it's described as a TF card or TransFlash, which should be the same size, but I'll have to uh, double check and see if there's anything I can do to get that figured out. Let's take a quick look at the interface. It's running Google Android 2.1, and it doesn't have the same um, Google Nexus 1-like uh, 3D app launcher. It has uh, sort of the old-school dock. Um, but it does have access to a couple of nifty things here, including the Android Market. Uh, unfortunately, while I was able to get the Android Market to come up here, I have not been able to actually get any applications to install properly. It'll uh, probably say that it's downloading the application, and then at some point I'll get a, a notice saying that it's failed. Um, once you get used to where the buttons are in the background, it's not too hard to hold it in one hand and sort of hit the home button. It's a little bit hard to demonstrate because I'm holding the camera in one hand. Um, now in terms of other applications, I was surprised to note that it comes with Skype beta. And I was actually able to get Skype to uh, come up here but even though I've got some phone buttons here, it says calling is not available in your region. And I think um, that's likely because the application wasn't really designed to run on this device. I think they might have taken the version that was made for uh, Google Android or something else. You should be able to chat using Skype. Um, so if you have Skype contacts, um, you might be able to do text chat, but I don't think you're going to be able to make voice calls to other Skype contacts or to uh, phone numbers. Um, you'll notice I also got a Gmail message up here. It does come with Google Maps, Gmail, uh, other mm -hmm. Google Android um, applications. So that's, that's nice. You'll also notice that sometimes I tap at the display and nothing happens for a second. That's probably my biggest problem with this device right now. It's reasonably fast and responsive, um, but when you combine the resistive touchscreen display and the um, uh, 800 megahertz processor, they combine to sort of make things a little bit slower than I would like. So for example, when you're scrolling through web pages, it's not that fast. And when you're trying to enter a URL, sometimes I hit the wrong button. Even though I'm pretty sure that I'm on the L there, it'll bring up a O or so forth. Um, because it does do suggested sites, um, it speeds things up a little bit, which is nice. but if you want to do it manually, it's going to take you a little while to enter some text. You can tap at the screen with your, think, your uh, think, fingers uh, if you want to do thumb typing, but you have to press pretty hard, and I find that it's less accurate than using the stylus. Um, so because you're using a stylus, and because it's a little bit slow, you're sort of doing one at a time. Uh, which makes things a lot slower than they are on a uh, Android phone, for example. Uh, most Android phones that I've used anyway. Uh, web pages, as you can see, load pretty quickly uh, and look pretty nice on the 7-inch 800 by uh, 480 pixel display. So here's the little computing website. That zoom action could be uh, stand to be a little bit faster, but basically works. Uh, 
Um, you'll also notice that some of the menus sort of drop down, don't take up the full screen. And I get the feeling that that's because they were designed to be run in portrait mode, but this device only seems to work in landscape mode. Uh, if there is a utility for rotating the screen, I haven't found it yet. So overall, as a web browsing device, it's okay. I mean, it's it's not ideal. It's not the fastest uh, because it runs uh, Google Android 2.1 instead of 2.2. There's no support for Adobe Flash, for instance. But um, it it sort of gets the job done, um, which isn't bad for the price. I was talking to a, a colleague of mine, and uh, he suggested that you know if it was even cheaper than 150, if if he could pick one of these up for 50 bucks or 100 bucks, it's about the same size and shape as a digital photo frame. So if you sort of think of it as a photo frame that also happens to be able to surf the web, run on battery power, and run on third-party applications, um, that's sort of the exciting thing here. You can walk into a store and pick one up for a very low price. And even though it doesn't provide a great web browsing experience, even though it's kind of difficult to type on the screen using the, uh, the stylus, um, it does work. You know, you can do those things. And so it's sort of value added. He was saying you know, it's about the same price as the new Amazon Kindle, for example. Um, and that's true. The difference is that the Amazon Kindle does one thing very well, which is read ebooks. And even though it has a web browser and some other capabilities, it doesn't really do those things all that well. Um, now, it's possible that some software updates could improve the responsiveness. Um, some of the applications that are a little bit clunky right now might be fixed. Uh, the ability to download and install uh, third-party apps using the Android market is something that I know that the, uh, the company behind it says that they're planning to bring pretty soon. Um, but you know, overall, you get what you pay for. And for a very cheap device, it seems to work. Um, let's take a quick look at the uh, YouTube application here. Okay, well that took a lot longer to load than I would have expected. But it did load. And let's just uh, grab a video here. Okay, well, video playback actually looks pretty good, very smooth here. Um, I don't believe this is a high definition video. It's uh, just sort of standard resolution, but um, on the 800 by 40 pixel display, it looks good, full frames, nice. So it takes a while for that application to load, but once it does load, it seems to run very nicely. And I have the sound turned down, so that's why you couldn't actually hear anything properly there. So there you go. There's a uh, first look at the uh, Augen Gen Touch 78 Android tablet uh, available at Kmart for uh, $150 for another day or two, and then it's going to be about $170. Probably the cheapest iPad alternative on the market right now. Not the most powerful, not the fastest. The resistive touch screen and slow processor make text entry pretty difficult. Uh, so I want to caution this device not be, might be for everybody. But if you're just looking for a way to fool around with uh, the Android operating system, if you're looking for a digital photo frame that happens to be able to surf the web, um, you can probably do worse. So there you go. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing. You can find more details about the Gen Touch 78 at lilliputing.com.